since I last talked to you, I flew to Anchorage from Kodiak and I picked up my family and I just spent about a week hanging out with them, doing family stuff, a little bit of fishing, a lot of family time. It was really nice. Um, it's kind of hard being away from your family this long. It's good to see them. Uh, really hard to drop them off at the airport, not gonna lie. But uh, now I'm gonna be picking up my buddy Andrew and uh, we're gonna be driving about six hours east to Toke and we're gonna get on a plane in Toke and then we're gonna fly out towards Canadian border and do a little bit of hunting. I'm gonna be hunting caribou. I think Andrew is still undecided. You can pick either caribou or moose where we're going, but you can't hunt both and he may decide he wants to hunt, uh, hunt moose, but uh, we'll find out here soon. So, long day of driving. I'm about two weeks into, nope, two weeks exactly into my Alaska trip. And I think I've got about three, three and a half weeks to go. So not even quite at the halfway point. And I still have two hunts left. So caribou right now for me. And then after this, we got moose. And I'll have about, oh, five days or so, four and a half, five days to try and find and kill a caribou. So here we go. Well, uh, six hours later, we made it to Toke, and we're at the uh, 40 Mile Air office. Now we're just gonna get our gear weighed. We're gonna fly out to tomorrow, when we gotta wear our gear, and then we're gonna go spend the night somewhere. And we'll see you uh, bright and early in the morning. Every place I've been in Alaska is unbelievably gorgeous. But this place, more than any other, reminds me of quintessential Alaska. The topography, the vegetation, the animals, it's remote, beautiful, and holy hell is it wild. Well, we are at our midway point here out in the field. So we got flown out of Toke, dropped off here at this airstrip, and then we're gonna take a cub to our final destination. Uh, but we are officially out in the field, and it feels fantastic because it is beautiful out right now. Coming from Kodiak, where it was really green and still felt like summer, you come out here, it's cold. The leaves have all changed color or are changing colors right now. And it's just absolutely gorgeous out here. So today we're going to get flown into our camp and we can't hunt today. Um, I am hunting caribou and my buddy Andrew Jakobak is with me um, and Andrew is hunting moose and neither of us can hunt today. So whole goal for today is just to get camp set up, get situated, kind of get uh, familiar with our surroundings, we do a little bit of glassing and then tomorrow we can start hunting. But it is just stunning out here. This is gorgeous gorgeous country. Um, yeah, it's beautiful out here. It's amazing. Well, now our pilots are gone. We just got dropped off here at our destination. This is just stunningly beautiful country. Kind of hard to describe. Just have to uh, take my word for it a little bit. <laughs> it is cool out here and quite remote. It's gorgeous. And watching those uh, pilots land 
in the willow gravel bed. Uh, those cubs are pretty sweet and those guys are very talented. So we're gonna haul our gear over to shore. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's hard to tell the viewfinder here. Haul our gear over there and then get our tent set up. And the blueberries are thick and they are peaking right now. So we are uh, probably going to uh, set about to pick in some blueberries since we can't hunt today um, after we get done setting up camp. Gosh. I'm a lucky man that I get to come in here. This is just gorgeous. Gorgeous country. What an experience. On the way in here, we didn't see, we saw a handful of caribou kind of like back up here off the ridge. I didn't see any moose. And Andrew saw a grizzly bear. It's not very far from here. So not a ton of wildlife sightings yet, but we're in a really good zone here. I'll have to show you what these blueberries look like, but they're pretty amazing. And I think today we'll go back up here on this ridge, get to a high spot and do a little glass in here this evening. I can tell there's animals that have been hanging out in here quite a bit in this river bottom. It looks like caribou as well as, you know, obviously moose as well. So, Hopefully we'll see some more here soon. What you got there, Andrew? Well, just getting the bow set up. Let me go do a little, a little target practice. Have fun, go stump shooting. Sounds like a good time. Do a little fashion stuff. So relaxing coming back here. It's you look relaxed. I I like it took maybe five minutes after the planes left, and I was just like total zen mode. Yep, which is great. That's great. All right, we got camp set up, and we're gonna go walk up the ridge and do some glassing for a bit. Before we do that, I want to show you something that we found. So all these trees here have uh, bear hair so, all over them. That is all the way down this tree. So, you know there's a lot of grizzlies around, uh, and now <laughs> apparently our camp is a place they like to hang out and scratch their backs. So that's great to know. So that'll make me sleep really well at night. We are officially walking out of camp. I'm going to find a place to glass. Gonna feel our way through this place. A little bit. Get a lay of the land. It's like caribou. Scat, caribou scat. All right, right next to the camp. That's a good sign. That's what you like to see. see them again. They are going to be gone. Um, 
but we're sitting here and 20 years below it's kind of like some cows and calves which is really cool to see they just came from the edge over here and just walked right below us it's really cool to see all right so here's the situation we got three bulls probably like five miles four or five miles away two of them are legal bulls for us to kill for Andrew to kill one of them is an absolute giant bull moose <clears throat> but it's like five miles away so they're I've already told Andrew there's no way he's allowed to go over there but he's huge Brad <laughs> there's just no way to get that boy back here um, we've got lots of caribou too there's this, this mountainside across from us over here just crawling with caribou it's like they're coming up mostly over the top and then kind of like side hilling through that country and there's some really nice bulls uh, two in particular that have been just like real real large boys be bulls I'd be very happy to shoot so I'm kind of contemplating right now whether or not it's a good idea to crawl up through that timbered slope brushy slope I'm sure and kind of sit up there in the morning and try and get myself in a position where I can try and cut off some of those caribou as they move through that, that mountain over there through the brush. chilly morning out today. This is the first morning. We actually have frost. If you hear that noise, that's Andrew over there doing some calling for camp. So our kind of game plan for the day is to do a little calling and raking here for moose. Don't expect that we're going like, to see anything moose-wise like close to camp today, but trying to get them to come to us as much as we can. <clears throat> and then we're gonna uh, go up the ridge that we saw a lot of uh, caribou on yesterday and see if we can't get into them up there. There's a really big bull moose that just came walking down the river from camp. I think he's come to our calls. I'm 90% sure he's legal for Andrew. off after that bull who was just on a walk down that river I've been trying to I fell back here and I've been trying to call or have been calling try and get him to either come in or halt and I cannot see that bull so it seems kind of weird to say that you lose like a seven foot tall animal but I've lost that bull and I've got an elevated perch here and last I saw him, he was probably about 200, 250 yards below camp here, heading down river. Andrew just grabbed his bow and just took off, trying to cut him off. And I've been trying to call. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of this brush and get up on a little elevated perch up there, see if I can't relocate him with a higher perch. It's possible that bull was coming into our calls this morning and he's just circling around us to get the wind right. I got out to my little open meadow here and I'm trying to find to refine that bull. I've spotted a cow, moose feeding down along the river there, but I don't see that bull yet. Interestingly, I got about 50 yards behind camp and found a huge 
moose track set in the moss, it was fairly fresh. Like, there's a good freeze, or there was a good freeze this morning, so all the or the moss is, has, a, has ice on it. And that track set had crushed the ice, which means it was from this morning at some point in time. Don't know if it was that same bull or not. Oh, no, I see two moves down there. Maybe that bull's down with that cow and I just can't see it. Oh, you know what? Those are not moose, those are grizzly bears. <laughs> those are bears. Two grizzly bears. Not moose. That is hilarious. I just saw the brown hump. I thought it was a moose hump. <laughs> Turns out it's grizzly bear. Uh, that's not very far from camp. Lovely. Ball coming up the ridge. Kind of just got over up to this top of this ridge where we can see down. Those caribou were coming up yesterday, and there's a nice ball coming up. Really nice ball, like a shooter ball. I had him at 60 yards, and I just thought, no, oh. he's got his head down, I can get to 50, right to that next knob, and I'm gonna shoot him, broadside. I'm just was like, no, oh. great shot. Just, just got greedy. So he didn't die. Back up to our glass and knob. I'm just gonna kinda hang out here for a few hours. See, there's a few, a couple cows that are coming, still coming up the ridge here. 
no, no more gold yet. It's kind of fun to play with that smaller bowl there laying down. Didn't really want to shoot it, but kind of fun to sneak in, get a little practice. I think the hardest part about that situation is it sort of it exemplifies the difficulty sometimes that can come with bow hunting. And we sat 100 yards from that bowl for two and a half hours. I least slept. If I had a rifle, it would have been <clears throat> over a while ago. Same thing with Andrews and Moose this morning. But chose not to bring one, so I'm stuck with what I got. And while I enjoy the challenge of sneaking in, and it's a lot of fun, there are times where like right now where I'm just like, why do you need to make things difficult on yourself? And I don't have a good answer for it. Other than success, it's just all the more rewarding when it does happen because of stuff like that. Caribou kind of off in the distance here, down low, but nothing close by. So I think that's going to do it for me for the day. Sun's going to go down here in just about 15 minutes. I'm going to try and uh, make it back to camp before it gets uh, super dark out. So got a pretty good action pack first day of hunting. Hopefully tomorrow brings a lot more of the same. So we'll see you bright and early tomorrow.